Have you ever experienced road rage or felt angry while driving a car? I might have a solution for you. Hello, my name is Dmitry Dmitrenko. I am a researcher at the Skylab and a teaching fellow at the University of Sussex. I was originally going to deliver this presentation in Honolulu, but since we are all working from home these days, I am recording this video in my flat in the southeast of England and trying to recreate the Hawaiian atmosphere with this beautiful, colorful shirt. My paper is entitled Karoma Therapy, Pleasant Sense Promote Safer Driving, Better Mood and Improved Well-Being in Angry Drivers, and I wrote it together with my co-authors, Emanuela Maggioni and Jada Branza from the Skylab, University of Sussex, Brittany Holthausen and Bruce Walker from the Sonification Lab, based at Georgia Tech, and my PhD supervisor, Mariana Obrist. We live in a fast-paced environment, and it is often difficult to avoid anger-eliciting situations, both on the road and before we actually get to the task of driving. Angry driving leads to road traffic accidents, and car manufacturers have developed a number of tools that help the driver avoid such situations. One of the examples for that is the Lane Departure Warning System. Systems of this kind warn the driver mostly using audiovisual notifications. A recent marketing research study conducted by JD Power suggests that nearly a quarter of all drivers find such alerts annoying, and more than a half of them actually switch such alerts off. Academic research suggests that auditory stimuli may get annoying, visual warnings may cause distraction, and most efficient notifications are actually multimodal. Since using multiple modalities and multiple senses is the key, why not using the sense of smell to interact with the driver? What makes the sense of smell even more interesting is its very strong link to emotions and memories. We also know that the sense of smell is good at activating the neural system, and it also has a direct link to the primary cortex. Previous research conducted in the context of driving has shown that olfactory stimulation results in better braking performance, decreased drowsiness, higher alertness, and better mood. When it comes to automotive industry, then such brands as Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and Bentley are developing their own in-car perfumes to help improve the pleasure of driving. Ford has patented their own in-car smell notification system However, we have not yet seen this product on the market. Simulated driving studies that I have conducted in the past have demonstrated that combining visual notifications with olfactory stimuli helps the drivers reduce their driving speed, keep a safer distance to the cars in front of them, and also to use the blinker each time they change the lane. This research also suggested that the olfactory modality is perceived as less distracting, more helpful, and more comfortable than the visual modality. But could olfactory stimuli help angry drivers too? To find an answer for this question, we have conducted the total of four studies. In the first study, we established a set of scents of different valence and arousal levels. In the second study, we identified stimuli that can elicit anger in participants before they start the task of driving. The study number three was conducted to understand what on-road events elicit anger in participants. Finally, in the study number four, we combined all the results of the first three studies to understand what effects different scents have on participants in an induced angry state. Prior to study number one, we went to a science fair and asked participants to sniff and rate a set of 11 different scents. We then used this data to extract four scents for further validation. We expected each of these scents to occupy one and only one quadrant of the two-dimensional valence and arousal space. In the positive valence low arousal quadrant we found rose, in the positive valence high arousal quadrant we found peppermint, in the negative valence high arousal quadrant we found civet and patchouli, but in the negative valence low arousal quadrant we found nothing. Consequently, we decided to avoid negative valence low arousal scents and only focus on the scents of rose, peppermint, and civet. For the control condition, we used water as a neutral stimulus. For the study number two, 
we decided to use photos from the International Affective Picture System as a set of anger eliciting stimuli. IAPS is a tool that has been widely used for eliciting emotions in participants, and it has been validated through a number of different studies. As we know, anger is a low valence, high arousal emotion. For this reason, we have first selected 10 pictures with such ratings for further investigation. These were pictures with very intense content, such as a man attacking a woman, a gun pointed at a teenager's head, or a person being set on fire. We then asked our participants to rate how angry these pictures make them feel on a 7-point Likert scale. We found a statistically significant effect of pictures on the anger ratings and chose three most highly rated pictures as stimuli that would elicit anger in participants before they start the task of driving. These were a picture of a soldier pointing a gun at a child, a picture of a man attacking a woman, and a picture of a man carrying an injured child. In the study number three, we investigated stimuli that would make the participants angry also while they are performing the task of driving. To tackle this challenge, we created a set of 12 on-road events that could potentially elicit anger in participants. We took the three pictures extracted from the study number two and placed them on the roadside billboards and also included such events as a car cutting off or a child playing with a ball on the street. We then asked our participants to drive through a course in which they would experience all 12 of these stimuli. Our participants were divided into two groups. The first group would only perform the task of driving, but the second group would be exposed to the anger eliciting pictures from the study number two before they start the task of driving. After having completed the driving task, participants were asked to rate each of the 12 on-road events. As the ratings from the second group were higher, we decided to use them for the next stage. From this group, we selected four events that had the highest anger rating. These were such on-road events as a car cutting off, a slow zigzagging lead vehicle, a cyclist cutting off, and a pedestrian suddenly crossing the road. Let me now show you how these events looked like. In the study number 4, we used all the results that I have just presented to conduct a simulated driving experiment in which we studied the effects of sense on the drivers in an induced angry state. We used the following procedure for this study. We started with a briefing, we then measured the emotional state of our participants using the self-assessment mannequins, and then we gave them an opportunity to get used to the driving simulator. In the third step, we showed them the three anger eliciting pictures and measured their emotional state again. We used four anger eliciting on-road events identified in the study number three and repeated each of them four times. The sequence of these events was randomized. Ten seconds before each on-road event, participants received a five seconds long puff of scent. Depending on the condition, this was rose, peppermint, civet, or clean air. The driving task took about 10 minutes to complete, and upon completion of the driving task, we measured the participants' emotional state again. In the final three stages of the experiment, we gave the participants a post-driving questionnaire to complete, we conducted with them a short interview, and we finished with the debriefing. The results on the self-reported emotions demonstrated that the participants' emotional state was in the positive valence low arousal quadrant before the start of the experiment. However, after having viewed the IAPS pictures, their emotional state moved to the negative valence high arousal quadrant, and this shift was also statistically significant. This means that participants were in an induced angry state before they started the task of driving. In the driving simulator, we used a large 55 inches screen to visualize the road. We then had a smaller screen underneath to visualize the dashboard, we delivered the sense using plastic tubes, and the delivery nozzle was located just behind the steering wheel. 
Now let me show you how participants performed when exposed to an unpleasant scent. As we have seen in this example, a participant who was exposed to a scent of civet was hesitating quite a lot, which finally led to an accident. And now, let me show you how participants performed when exposed to a pleasant scent. In this example, however, a participant who was exposed to a scent of rose appeared to be much calmer and passed the critical event with confidence without causing any accident. The results of this study suggest that those participants who were exposed to the pleasant scents of rose and peppermint experienced significantly fewer collisions than participants who were exposed to the unpleasant scent of civet and those in the control condition. We also found that the scent of rose resulted in significantly higher comfort ratings than in the case of civet. Overall, the scent of rose led to the highest comfort and liking ratings among all conditions, although these differences were not significant. As you might remember, after the procedure of inducing anger in participants with the help of IOPS pictures, the self-reported emotional state of participants was mapped onto the negative valence and high arousal quadrant. After having completed the drying task, the participants in the rose and the peppermint conditions experienced a shift of their emotional state towards the positive valence and high arousal quadrant. Participants in the civet condition remained in the negative valence and high arousal quadrant, with their arousal level going up. Participants in the control condition also experienced a positive change, however, the valence of their emotional state remained on the border between the positive and the negative sides. This means that the emotional state of participants in the rose and peppermint conditions improved despite all the anger eliciting events. In the control condition, the emotional state remained neutral, but in the civet condition, it only got worse. Our findings on the effects of sense on the driving behavior go in line with the related work, confirming that unpleasant scents lead to degraded driving performance whereas pleasant scents help the overstimulated angry drivers calm down. Similar results have been found in the context of auditory stimulation, where it was found that music helps improve the driving performance only if the driving task is understimulating. What it comes to the effects of scents on the emotions and well-being, then the interviews conducted in the scope of our project have confirmed that there are interpersonal differences in the preferences of scents. For example, some participants might choose the scent of peppermint instead of rose as a relaxing stimulus because they associate it with refreshing and relaxing experiences. This could be easily addressed with the use of customizable olfactory interfaces. We have also seen that positive scents undoubtedly contribute to the well-being of the driver. However, a recent interview with a perfumer working in an automotive industry suggests that an Inca scent needs to be unbiased. This means that if we go for peppermint, for example, we might need to use it as a base note for a more complex blend of odorants. This could be especially interesting for designing luxury Inca experiences, because an unbiased scent could be associated with a unique ritual. For the conclusion, I would like to highlight the significance of our work. According to Nietzsche, one third of all road traffic accidents are linked to anger. This means that reducing anger is a very important task. Pleasant scents could help us make angry drivers calmer, but we still require further studies with more participants, on-road tests, and a bigger sample of scents. Finally, if you ask me whether olfactory stimulation is the ultimate solution for angry drivers, I would say we still need to investigate other multisensory effects. But what I know for sure is that pleasant scents definitely have the potential of making angry drivers happy. Thanks for listening to my presentation. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. For regular updates on this topic, 
Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. But now it's time for me to say goodbye, and I see you next time.